Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Celasta Palace of Ice, with me, Bring It On. Palace of Ice is an expansion for Celasta Crown of the Magister, and just like the base game, it was both developed and published by Tactical Adventures, and was released on May 25th, 2023. Quite a bit is added with the new expansion, including two new graces, the Gnome and the Tiefling, a higher level cap up to level 16, and of course a whole new campaign, which we will be playing through in this Let's Play. The new campaign is also a continuation of the story from the original Crown of the Magister campaign, and you can import your party from the base campaign into this one. So that's what we'll be doing. Let's jump into a new adventure, change the campaign to Palace of Ice. In this adventure that follows on from the events of Crown of the Magister, our four heroes from the Principality of Maskarth pursue their destiny in the frozen lands of the Snow Alliance. We play on Authentic Mode and import this save. So we have Donald Shiel, an Oath of Devotion Paladin, Wagerum Metalbeard, a Battle Cleric, Megan Shiel, a Hunter Ranger, and Feindal, a Green Mage Wizard. And let's go! Oh, and you don't have to import a save. You can make all new characters if you want, and they will start at level 10. Previously, in Crown of the Magister. Once sworn in, you will carry the authority of the Council wherever you go. I swear. I swear. Her Royal Highness has a busy schedule. They were Sorax. Our attackers, not scavengers, not bandits, Sorax. Bring us the head of a Sorak for the whole council to see. Worthy foes indeed. Thankfully we prevailed. There's something else. A crown? This is indeed the crown of the Magister. Belonging to Kaysenax, eternal soul of the eight traditions. Adrastea, the prudent shield, master of abjuration, in your debt and at your service. I feel your spirit in the crown, Kasenax. The Magister is still in the crown? We're not at war yet. But Galavan's massing troops the border. Bad news really does travel fast. The city's imperial gate. They're here. They're trying to get away with the crown! Look! The princess? The crown needs you. I felt it from the beginning. Kaysenax's spirit calls for you to save him from the darkness. When you are ready, step onto the gate and fulfill your destiny. Go now. Take care of Zolasta. Take care of your world. With the rift closed, Sortar the Sorak god still on Tirmar, and his hordes of minions were no longer a threat. The heroes were celebrated throughout the Principality of Mazgarth and beyond. The Council of Care Kiflin named them Heroes of Zolasta. The heroes of the Rift are on their way to the Inarium. They have been invited by Marshal Sunblaze who seemed particularly worried in the letter he sent them. After one last night on the road, wake up less than a day's walk from their destination. Morning everyone. So, here we are. Just a few more hours and we'll be able to sleep in a bed. Well, the Inarium is basically a church, not a hostel. I don't think Beric Sunblaze and his paladins sleep on the ground, though. Come on, pack your stuff. Let's not linger. 
I still don't understand why we're not in Galavan, looking for what's left of the Sorax. Marshal Sunblaze is obsessed with them. I'm pretty sure he wants to tell us about them. We'll know what he wants soon enough. All right, gather your stuff. Not sure which one is mine. I'll pick one at random. Hey, nobody touches my underwear. No chance of that. Okay, we have Hubble Ups to divvy out. Let's make sure we're all well equipped. We have the Great Axe of Sharpness equipped, the Warden Blade, and a Shield plus one. The Warden Blade allows you to cast Spirit Guardians once per day. Also gives you plus one armor class. It's just a fantastic weapon. Uh, Great Axe of Sharpness we can probably swap out for... They gave me a second Warden Blade. Interesting. Times three, that's times 1.8. All right, so all the equipment we got out of the chest, I guess, is if we didn't have all the equipment from the previous campaign. So if you don't import your characters, all this would come in handy. I do feel like I am missing some equipment. Overall, I do prefer the Great Axe of Sharpness, but the Lightbringer Greatsword is just thematically better for a Paladin. All it does is add uh, 1d8 radiant damage. But it's also a greatsword plus one. Bag of holding. A dwarven plate plus two to armor class. Advantage on strength, athletics, ability checks when shoving the bearer. And advantage on constitution saving throws. Then a belt of giant strength. Your strength score is 25 while you're wearing this belt. Has no effect on you if your strength is score is already 25 or higher. And Ring of the Lord Inquisitor, plus one to all saving throws, plus two to armor class. And you have four charges of Dominate Person, three charges of Hold Monster, and two charges of Hold Person. Ring of the Lightbringers, cast Shine at Will, not super exciting. Uh, boots of Striding and Springing. So minimal speed, six, and jump at maximum distance without risk. Unaffected by encumbrance penalties and unaffected by heavy armor penalties. Wage Room has the Bear's Claw. It's a plus one mace. 1d8 plus one damage plus 1d6 crush damage. Uh, Bright Wall plus one armor class. Cast Light at Will and cast Daylight once per day. Big Crossbow. We have Crossbow plus one. Half of healing. All right. A helm of comprehending languages. Cast tongues at will. Half plate plus one. Belt of giant strength, or hell giant strength. Uh, your strength score is twenty one while you're wearing this belt. Has no effect on you if your strength score is already twenty one or higher. A uh, ring of poison resistance. Resistance to poison, damage is halved. Slippers of spider climbing, can move along walls.
Frostburn Longsword seems pretty good too. Hmm. Right, she's over encumbered. Because she has way too many arrows in her inventory. Let's get her equipment. She has a rapier plus two. Uh, she probably do with a better shield. Do we have a? No, we don't. Interesting. Uh, the storm bow, one d eight plus one damage and one d ten shock damage. Arrows. Heavy haversack. Amulet of health. Your constitution score is 19 while you wear this amulet. Has no effect on you if your constitution score is already 19 or higher. Empress Garb Chain Shirt. It's a clothing with plus one armor class, and it sets it to 14. Plus dex bonus. And this quiver of Kulthanin. Generate 20 arrows every hour. A ring of protection plus one, plus one all saving throws, plus one armor class. And another ping of po ring, ping. Another ring of poison resistance, just like our cleric has. And our wizard. A soul drinker dagger. It's a dagger that does 1d4 plus 1 damage, plus 2d4 force damage. The Medusa bow. It's a Well, it's a bow. It does 1d6 plus 1 damage plus 1d8 poison damage. He has the circulate, uh, sorry, circlet of blasting. Cast Scorching Ray 1 charge. Cloak of Arachnida. Resistance to poison. Damage is halved. Can move along walls. Cannot be restrained by webs. And can cast Pass Without Trace once per day. Uh, Bracers of Defense. Plus 2 to armor class when not wearing armor or shield. Sylvan Armor. Also counts as clothing. Plus two on Wisdom Survival Ability checks. Plus two on Intelligence Nature Ability checks. Plus three to Armor Class. He also has an Endless Quiver of Colthanin. And his Component Pouch. No rings, though. Alright, let's level everybody up real quick. We rest here. Not yet. And going over all the equipment and everything was also for my benefit. It's been a little while since I've played, especially with this party. The inscription of this long forgotten statue is eroded by time and overgrown with moss. It looks like a Vestal of Einar, erected to proclaim that this land was under the protection of the Anarium. been looted. A fallen ancient Manicolin ruin, redolent of the ghosts of the Empire and border conflict. Imperial banners from antiquity somehow still remain, born in slave revolts during the War of Sorrow.
He's missing health. Try again. success. Ah! I see that guy over there. Go and smite him. Not bad, eh? So a spiritual weapon. Death nice. Reaches out for you. So it may have been more prudent to keep my cleric right here, even move him right here, possibly, because he has a little aura that gives all my other companions, if they're within one tile of him, a plus one to attack, damage, saving throw, and armor class. Bunch of magic missiles of this guy. Probably not the most efficient use of his turn, but that's okay. You're still in the fight, my friend.
truly formidable. That's a good use of Hunter's Mark. Eh, we don't need a tangle. A palpable hit. I don't think they're running anywhere this turn. I'm still out of range. Whoopsies. Go ahead and dash. So if they try to run away, she'll take two attacks of opportunity. You have them now. Well, that was a good warm up. I didn't expect an attack so close to the Inarium. They're in uniform. They're not bandits. Mercenaries from Galavan. So deep into the Principality's territory. Don't be fooled. They didn't come to invade. They came for us. Let's move. We need to speak to Marshal Sunblaze. Okay, difficulty warning. This new campaign is mainly aimed at experienced Solasta players. If you're a beginner or if you want to refresh your memory, don't hesitate to consult the tutorials in the journal section. You get the equipment you wanted. Once you leave, you will not be able to return for your remaining equipment. Make sure you have taken everything you might need in order to continue with the best setup. Good news is I started with everything I needed for the best setup. I am an experienced Lost of player. I'm just a little rusty. Go that way. Cool. I do really enjoy the artwork in this game, too. The loading screens are really pretty. I'm with Barrack Sunblaze. Easy peasy.
Wow, we failed by one. A large book lies open on a colorful and captivatingly illustrated page. The illuminations in the margins are very pretty. But the actual written content of the work is quite baffling. This imposing and majestic statue of the Divine Warrior stands tall and proud in full plate armor, holding a shield emblazoned with a fiery cross. A feeling of surety emanates from its presence. My friends, it is so good to see you again. Likewise, Marshal. We came as fast as we could. Great, thanks. You must have many questions. But something came up that I have to take care of right away. You've been traveling all day. You should take a rest. We'll talk tomorrow morning. Fine. Where can we set up camp? Ah, you're pulling my leg, aren't you? We have a room set aside for you. Please, make yourselves comfortable. Thank you, Marshal. Assuming this door is locked. It's beyond locked. Not be opened. Alright, the Crown of the Magister. Dear Reader, in this tome, if you would indulge me, I'd like to take the time to record for posterity the astonishing tale of the most marvelous group of adventuring heroes to grace the Losta. A group so true of purpose that their actions ensured the well-being and safety of our beloved Principality. Placing themselves repeatedly in such untold danger, they may one day be free of the menace of the Sora Koth, and the blessings of Einar be upon them. This new and remarkably hefty volume contains a painstakingly detailed telling of the adventurer's story to date. And the Snow Alliance. A brief introduction by Malian Trefoil. Having spent years trading with the people of the Snow Alliance, I have found there are a few things one ought to know if one wishes to understand both them and their culture. Firstly, the mountains they live amongst are bitterly cold, harsh, and unforgiving. I'm equipped for extremes. It was on my first mountain hike with locals that I discovered that the people of this area have 67 words for snow. No wonder the national emblem takes the form of a snowflake. Several pages seem to have been carefully cut out. It was on my fourth visit that I first truly felt accepted. A terrible avalanche had struck the village, able to extract not only ourselves and save the children, but also recover food and supplies while the villagers of Fighting Age fought off a roaming, a roaming group of Peaks terrors. Never underestimate these people or their reserves of strength and hardiness. No wonder they survived not only the Cataclysm, but also the War of Sorrow. The last pages describe the writer's retirement in the north. Upon returning to the Principality for my last trade mission, I found that, like my adoptive clan, I too had become cautious of southern strangers, and mistrusting of their too obvious motives. I now looked upon the soft hands and faces of the people of Mazgarth, and saw their eyes light up with avarice, grasping at the beautifully crafted gems and jewels I brought with me. It was only the Principality's gold and the much needed supplies they would buy that helped calm those fears. War of Sorrow. Some new crafting options. A bunch of Stormblade weapons. But also, the War of Sorrow. This ancient and crumbling tome appears to be from around the time the Magister closed the rift. Many pages crumbled to dust on contact or faded beyond legibility. 
It was late summer when I, Arnis Varthar, received the first reports from the clans to the north. My advisors dismissed them as the ravings of the insane. Two parties of brave volunteers I sent, only dark tidings returned. It was then that I knew a great evil was abroad, a vast, decaying horde of undead, a monstrous tidal wave at the front of which mounted on a skeletal horse, an undead warrior with glowing red eyes. Surviving the Great White Boots of the Winterlands and Whiteburn Heavy Crossbow Glad to see more magic crossbows That's cut off a little bit uh, Several missing torn and smudged pages that make any understanding it difficult The clues took me ever north from Mazgarth North into the cold mountains of the Snow Alliance and then beyond A whispering voice beckoning me onwards I needed to see if the rumors I heard were true. What would I find? The people of the clans thought I was mad, foolish, or both. In hindsight, I now wonder at my own sanity. What possessed me to push on so far? There's a reason the people of the Snow Alliance call it the Great White. Okay, I'm going to call it here. Uh, next time we will rest level up, and then speak to Barrack Sunblaze. We got a little bit of everything this episode. Uh, some lore, some combat, inventory management, a whole shaboom. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.